Okay, so um, we're going to take a look at the general addition rule for any event. Okay, so um, what can happen sometimes is there's, this doesn't necessarily, you can use this for any event because if there's disjoint events, this would just be zero. So there's nothing to subtract. So when you have, you want to find the probability of A or B, what you need to do is add the probability of A, add the probability of B, and then subtract the probability of A and B. It's important that you subtract the probability of them both because if not you're double dipping or double counting and your probability would add up or could add up to more than one. If you don't want to use this rule, again, you could always just use your Venn diagram like we did earlier. This is just another way to do it. And this formula is given to you on your formula sheet. So we have the same information. We have the college students, 56% live on campus, 62% live off, 42% both. What's the probability that a randomly select student either lives on campus or eats on campus? So I'm going to take the probability of living on campus, which is L, and meal plan. So, that's a union symbol. So the probability that someone lives on campus is 56%. To that, I'm going to add the probability that they live in a residence hall. And from that, I need to subtract the probability of both. So that's my rule there. So the probability that lives on campus, the probability of the meal plan, minus the probability of them both. I just plug them into that formula. And again, you would notice that if I didn't subtract the 0.42, my probability would have been 1.18. Okay, that's why it's necessary to subtract both. So now, I have another situation. Customers at a certain department store pay for purchases with either cash or credit card. Okay, and what they have is a table that displays how they pay. So, there's cash, there's the store credit card, MasterCard, Visa, American Express. So they have some different events here and they want you to find the probabilities. Now generally in this case we're just going to go through and add them because you're normally not going to pay with both. So for this one they want the probability of a store credit card or a MasterCard. Okay, you're not going to pay with both. And again we're not going to count those situations where okay you see where they split up a credit card. Generally, let's just assume that doesn't happen. It's never good practice. So I'm going to add those up and I'm going to get 0.43. Now for this one, they want the probability of the second payment type, the third, the fourth, or the fifth. Now I could add up all four of those, but a quicker way to do this might be just to subtract one since it's not included. So my first choice would be to take 0.25 plus 0.18 plus 0.15 plus 0.12, and that's one way to get the answer. Or, I'd rather use the complement, which would be 1 minus 0.3. Either way, you're going to get a probability of 0.7. And in this case, we're considering these disjoint events. Okay, the store only allows one payment method. So they told you, you cannot pay with a store credit card and a MasterCard. So these cannot happen at the same time. Therefore, they're disjoint events, and that's zero. Okay. Now, our last example problem, the police report that 78% of drivers stopped on suspicion of drunk driving are given a breath test, 36% a blood test, and 22% are both. First of all, they want the probability of a test, okay, and then there's some other questions here. If you want to make a Venn diagram for this, you can, or we can use our rules. So, for this one, they just want the probability of a test. So that's the probability of either or. So pretty much for this one, I can say the probability of breath test or a blood test. So the probability of a breath test is 0.78. The probability of a blood test is 0.36. And then you always have to subtract the probability of them both. So I'm going to do that math. And again, just like before, if I not if I didn't subtract that 22%, you would be over 1. So you know you've done something wrong. 
Okay, so this one is a blood test or a breath test, but not both. Okay, so right here I have one or the other. Now, you could just take this minus the probability with both. If you wanted to, you could also set up a Venn diagram. So again, your Venn diagrams help you in a lot of situations. So blood test, breath test, right in there is going to be the 0.22. Again, you could have also used this method to get your answers besides the rule. You have to pick what works best for you. So again, for that 36% minus the 22 right in here would be 0.14. So the probability of one or the other, but not both, I can take the 0.56 plus the 0.14, I'm gonna get the 0.7. I would have got the same answer had I taken the probability of one or the other and resubtract the 0.22. Now, the last thing is the probability of neither test, so that's outside the circle. Now, everything in here adds up to 92%, so for neither test, I'm going to take 0.92 and subtract, and that gives me 0 0.08.